Hi, George. As you reviewed the tape yesterday uh, of the running play specifically, I guess you had 23 handoffs, 34 yards on those gains. Were there any where you thought that Miles or Savon could have created more? Or was this, and I know no coach ever likes to blame everything on one group, but in all candor, were all 23 runs poorly blocked or could either back have gotten anything more out of any of them? Yeah, there's a lot that goes into those. I mean, it could be, you know, the play call. I think we can improve on a, on a few of those decisions, um, you know, running inside versus running outside and vice versa, or pulling guys. So, you know, that, that's part of it too. Um, but, you know, I think it's collectively, we got to do a lot better from not just the line, but the tight ends, uh, hitting holes if they're there. Um, like I said, some of them, you know, they were, they were uphill runs, especially at the end of the game there. And, um, you know, I think that, that we definitely got to do a lot better than, than uh, you know, performance yesterday. One quick follow. I know Jesse was saying, yes, uh, actually last week, Jesse Davis was saying that to establish the running game the way we want it, we can't continue gaining one or two yards on first down. How difficult does that make it for you as a play caller where you want to establish the running game, but if you consistently gain nothing or one yard or lose a yard on first down as you did yesterday, how can you in good conscience keep going back to the running game on first down if it never works? Yeah, that's a good question for um, really any play call. You know, if you don't if you don't get any yards on first down, which you know, happens in the past, happens in the run, actions, you know, then put you in a – I wouldn't say uh, uh, it, it puts you in a little bit more predictable situation. So, yeah, it makes it harder. And, uh, you know, that's where you saw some of the rush getting to us, too. So uh, they did a good job of stopping the run. So give them credit and then uh, making us a little bit one dimensional. Thanks, George. Go to Travis. Hey, good afternoon, Coach. I wanted to ask you a little bit about Jalen Waddle. Seems like he's had a bit of an uptick the last couple of weeks playing on the perimeter versus inside. I guess kind of a two-part question. Um, what does that say about his progression as a pro at this point of his career? And also, what does that help you guys accomplish as an offense when he can be a little bit more versatile? Yeah, I mean, when he got here, you know, uh, we had a conversation about the receiver position and not just being a slot and not just, you know, that's kind of how we look at the tight end, that's how we look at – a lot of the, uh, the players, whether it's back, catching a ball out of the backfield, and we, we want to be uh, very capable of, of playing them inside, playing them outside, using them in motion, uh, shifting them across formations, and as a rookie to absorb all that and then still be productive on both spots. It's a credit to him, uh, his preparation, um, and, and knowing the DBs he's going against. There's a lot that goes into that. And, and um, you know, he's done an excellent job. Uh, you know, first first year of, of, of taking that information and then going out there and being productive. David? Hi, Coach. Could you assess the pass protection? Was there a common thread as to why there were so many pressures allowed yesterday? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, like I said, there's some plays that maybe we, we designed that uh, involve the quarterback holding the ball a little bit. That, you know, I'd like to erase those from the – from the call sheet, but uh, and then there's some times where we got to do a better job uh, at all positions. Like I said, tight end position or line position. Uh, there's some plays that we can get the ball out earlier. There's some routes that we can run uh, that we shouldn't be spending time at the top of the route. So, you know, protection and and the run game. A lot of that, you know, it, it looks like it's one position. Uh, I'll tell you that, that there's a lot of a lot of factors that go into that group and that production of of run the ball, protecting and uh, getting yards on on those plays. Omar? If I could piggyback on that, you, you said something that I, I, I really wonder about. Uh, how much, because of your protection issues, do you have to throw out of this playbook just because you guys don't seem to be able to protect at a respectable rate for either of the quarterbacks? Yeah, there's there's some plays and some games that we're, we're, you know, we're right on, we're doing a good job and we're, you know, able to maybe hold on to it a little bit longer. And then others like yesterday where the ball, you know, had to come out of our hands. Again, it's, it's, uh, those guys did a good job. Martin did a good job off the edge. I think uh, there's some good rushes by Collins too inside those, you know, those, those players are, are good players. We probably could have done a lot uh, or a little bit more uh, to help, help the line out. Um, and, you know, and, and, and when, when the game starts becoming how it was yesterday, you know, we're trying to just get first downs and, and 
you know, possess the ball, which overall, you know, we ended up having more possession time than them, uh, you know, considering the turnovers, which, you know, was really a phenomenal um, feat when you, when you look at those numbers. I mean, because we never want to turn the ball over that many times, but it's still leading possession. You know, give credit to our defense for getting the ball back. Al? George, um, say, staying somewhat on this theme about handling pressure, um, the Ravens, especially lately uh, when they've gone against the Dolphins, have done a, a pretty good job of winning the physical battle up front. How do you how do you handle a team like that that's so physical? And are there times um, when you might say use finesse to to overcome whatever advantage they may have in the physical battle? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. We're just getting started on them, really. We, we, we had a little bit uh, last week uh, to get to know them, if you will. And then now it's about putting it all together. So they're a good defense. They're a good team. Um, they find a way to win. They, they, they turn the ball over. They create negative plays. Um, and we're going to have to improve on that in a short week. And there's a lot to that. Um, you know, obviously, our guys had to come in here, uh, be super attentive and uh, you know, try to get ahead and win the mental battle uh, today, tomorrow, next day, uh, and come out and play a game on Thursday on a, on a short week against a good team. So it's a big challenge, and we know that. And so, you know, today's a big day for us. Cam? George, what's up, man? Um, what, what are maybe the differences that you have to keep in mind when calling plays for Jacoby versus Tua? Yeah, well, you know, every quarterback's different um, and they have their strengths. Um, and, you know, we don't want to give everything away as far as how that goes, but, um, you know, under center, in the gun, motions, shifts, uh, alerts, um, you know, empty, all of that stuff factors into, you know, the quarterback's comfort level and um, then being able to put that all together and making sure that, that, you know, whatever play call is going in, that there's there's a good understanding of all the different um, you know, defenses or, or things that can align defensively for for him. He's got to make a lot of decisions at the line of scrimmage. That's for every quarterback. Um, and, you know, we've, we've played them both this year. So uh, the comfort level with the line, the communication with the center. You know, we practice all week with one center. And then uh, early on, we, we end up getting another center in there. So. Uh, that, that, that stuff is definitely um, a lot of factors and it's a lot of uh, variables that we just need to overcome and, uh, you know, give credit to the guys for battling really honestly for, for 60 minutes and having some negative plays and overcoming some of those and putting, putting a good end to half drive uh, that ended up being enough. Without, I guess, Jordan, if I could follow up without getting into the details of what they are giving out clues, we, do you have conversations with Jacoby about you know maybe things he likes better or things that you feel like may work with him that you may not run for two as much. Yeah, yeah, and and they're at different stages in their career too. So um, you know some of those plays that maybe Jacoby's had experience with, maybe two hasn't, and maybe two has repped some plays in college that Jacoby hasn't. So uh, yeah, definitely those conversations have to take place before uh, you know feel comfortable about calling the play. Omar? I want to ask about the offensive line. Obviously, you guys have struggled all season. Uh, why, why have there not been more changes made to that unit that aren't injury-related since the performance has not been there? Yeah, I mean, there's we're looking at it week to week. We look at it day to day, um, you know, as far as those positions are concerned. And, uh, you know, every job's earned in practice each week. And, you know, by Sunday, we're putting the, the group out there. We feel best about um, being able to, to help us run the ball, protect, throw the ball, catch, whatever position it is. So yeah, that's a day-to-day -day deal. That's part of, you know, our, our culture here as far as competition goes. And, um, you know, I think that, that there's a lot on everybody, you know, to maintain your position or to win a, win a position. Um, so it's not just the O-line. It's, it's all the positions where that takes place. Daniel? Hey, George. I know that the players um, on both sides are different. There's different coaching staffs, but just knowing that, um, you know, the Dolphins defense, your defense, and the Ravens defense are kind of built 
in the in the same mold in terms of the mentality to, to blitz and pressure how much do you think that maybe that familiarity will, will help you as you try to um, game plan on a short week mm -hmm. yeah i mean we we've we've gone against our defense and a lot of pressure um you know from trying to camp now and and you know sometimes it's different overall scheme you know and so uh there's there's a lot of different blitzes that baltimore runs and uh, you know we're gonna have to be ready for them they do a good job of uh, getting in position to cover down after after they pressure, um, so you know that they're a good sound defense. They coach well, got a lot of talent, and uh, you know they they execute and make make big plays. Whether it's a negative play in a run game, a sack, uh, you find some quarterbacks really not knowing what's uh, you know what side the blitz is coming from. Then there's a negative play or um, you know forced ball that that maybe shouldn't be thrown. So uh, we got our work cut out for us. It's on all downs. It's everywhere throughout the field. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to move the chains, and find ways to get first downs, hold the ball, and, and score touchdowns when we can. Al? You know, dealing with the differences between Jacoby and Tua got me thinking about the fact that this is a short week and how, how much that might complicate things for you guys. Um, are you thinking you're going to just have to make a call maybe today or tomorrow, or could it go down to, you know, game time like it did yesterday? Because um, everything is so compact this week. Right. And, you know, the good thing is we knew this was going to be a short week early on in our uh, season, and, and that's part of the NFL. Um, you know, there's those decisions that need to be made. Sometimes they're a little bit later than others. Um, and as a professional, you know, both guys need to be ready. And, you uh, that's the way we're going to approach it, and we need to do a good job of game planning so that you know there's not a lot of changes, uh, one way or the other. Um, and and those guys are both capable of leading us to victories. They both know that we have a lot of confidence in them. And uh, you know what we put out there uh, here in these next couple of days, next couple of hours, to be honest with you, are going to be important for those guys to make good decisions on whether they can execute those plays uh, the way that we're going to you know dial them up. Does anyone have a final question for Coach Godsey? We'll go one more question to Cam. Sorry, I'm ready to get out of here. <laughs> um, there's been, I'm, I'm sure you got a lot of questions about the, the deep ball and maybe the lack thereof. I'm curious, when, when you're trying to create those big chunk plays, what are sort of the elements that you have to consider, you know, when deciding the call, okay, I'm trying to run a go or I'm trying to run this deep route. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything's involved with that as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, what receivers um, are out there running those. You know, we've obviously had some some um, uh, variety there at that position with some injuries, uh, how we're going to protect it, you know, and uh, how many people need to be involved in the protection, uh, max it up, you know, release quite a few guys. So th there's a lot that goes into that, I think. Uh, you know, yesterday we we really couldn't hold on to the ball too long, and um, you know that that's kind of how the, the game ended up taking place there. So uh, you know we had we had a couple sacks really for for you know ten yards there that we don't want to have. You know, especially the one right there where we're in field goal range. So uh, those those type of things we got to eliminate. And sometimes it's better, you know, although it may not be a huge play uh, to get the ball out of your hands. And, and move the ball that way. So there, there's a lot of factors there. Um, and, you know, every week we're going against a good a good front. I mean, the guys here at this level are, are excellent. They, they got great, put great effort, uh, especially this uh, Houston and, and Baltimore. So um, we'll have to do a good job protecting it uh, to get the ball downfield.